of being here in 1989, May of 18, 1989, for your first fight here at the Pensacola Civic Center. Um, now, almost 29 years later, I have the same privilege, a um, little bit different capacity, being the general manager and seeing your final fight here in Pensacola. So for me, this is really um, a pleasure and an honor. Thank you, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So on behalf of my team here at the Pensacola Bay Center, we'd like to give you what we call our medal. This is a commemorative medal for you honoring your final fight here in Pensacola and at the Pensacola Bay Center. So thank you so much for doing this here. So we're really happy and excited about this. We hope it'll be the future of a lot of good things to come. But I'd like Dean to say a few words because it's his birthday. <laughs> uh, step up here and say hello. I don't do all this, but thank you, everybody. I love everybody for coming out and. Thank you. Appreciate all the happy birthday wishes. Happy birthday, Dean! The other guy that uh, also is part of our team, a guy that I met more than 10 years ago now, uh, he's, he's a real staunch guy, and he's also very, uh, he's the vision. And he also was the one who's good friends with Dana and was the one who got uh, Dana White, I mean, and was able to get this on UFC Fight Pass. And I'd like to introduce uh, McGee Wright, who's been with Roy ever since they were childhood friends. Come up, come on. Up. Um, thank you everyone for coming out. Um, the press, I mean, it's um, just delightful to see all you guys come out and uh, honor Roy for his last fight. Um, and Scott, thanks for um, taking the fight. And uh, kind of a funny story when we started talking about doing this fight. I mean, I don't even know how he knew as fast as I did. He's calling me, texting me like, hey. And um, so we, I mean, um, you see me tough as hell. So um, I appreciate you coming out, man, and uh, giving it all you got. And um, it's, it's just an honor to have you on our card. And uh, we worked with him, you know, in the past, and uh, we work with some more in the future. And um, Last, you know, um, all the square ring, Island Fights, Dean Tool, John, everybody. Um, just, you know, it's a lot of work to make this come together. We did it in a short period of time. I think it was January the 8th when I actually texted Dana and asked him about can we do it on Fight Pass and we put it together this quick. And But um, most of all, <laughs> Roy, <laughs> it's just the most incredible not just a fighter, the most incredible human being ever, the Roy Jones Jr. Uh, I was with Don King for 15 years, and we were doing lots of Roy's fights back in the day, and uh, I through Met McGee and and we decided I decided I was going to leave Don and I figured well I could I was going to leave Don anyway and I figured who is the best fighter out there who is the guy that I've been watching for all these years and I could have gone with any of these fighters because I was pretty had a lot of experience and uh, I said you know what Roy Jones he is the guy he is the icon of my generation and so it's been a privilege and an honor for me to be involved with him and we're still involved we still have square ring and we're going to keep working together for a lot of future things to come but uh it's been a real honor and a pleasure working with you roy and love you man so i'd like to introduce scott come on up scott and you can uh say Thanks for putting up a great fight. It was a hell of a fight, and we really was really good. Yeah, this was um, you know, a dream come true for me. Um, last year, a fight fell out on Roy's card on the undercard when he fought uh, 
uh, Bobby Gunn and I helped Matt Chikram at the last second. He told me if I ever needed a favor, um, let him know. I asked him if he had any more than shoes left. He said he didn't. I said maybe he can come down to light heavyweight and fight me. He said he was you know, never making light heavyweight again. I seen him put the post up. You know, decided to gain 20 pounds and get to get in the ring with Roy Jones Jr. Boy, I really appreciate you, man. I, that's something I'll never forget. Thank you so much. Before I bring up Roy, I see somebody back there who's been with Roy for a long time. Come on up, Natalyn. Come on. You've been here a long time. Come on up and say a few words. over 20 years and I'm extremely proud of you and I'm glad um, he did it his way like Frank Sinatra so I feel like um, you've done everything you've accomplished so much and there's nothing else for you to prove so I'm just happy for you great performance great night we started in Pensacola we ended in Pensacola there it is P. Cola in the house <laughs> All right, well, here's the man you've been waiting for. Come on up, Roy. Um, I guess I'll make this short and quick. Um, I just want to say thank you to everybody that ever had anything to do with my career, good, bad, and ugly, and different. I don't really care what it was. We all came through hard times. Everybody, um, there, there are ups, there are downs, and it's like, it doesn't matter about the ups and downs how we finish the race. And tonight we finish the race in a good spot. You know, we're still happy, we still can talk, we still do what we do the way we want to do it. And um, when you can finish the race like that, you can thank God for a wonderful journey. So uh, everybody who's come up, even other people here who had not come up, my man, my Terry Griffin, there, Nate Campbell here, Billy Lewis in the house. I mean, it's the way I walk over there's a pile of people that, that I probably been missing, but that all played a part of helping Brandon and helping me be who become who I became. And it didn't just start yesterday, it started a long time ago. Back when I was running these streets of Pensacola jogging every day, people talk about the little boy running the interstate, you know? And uh, it's just, to have it all come full circle is almost like a dream come true. And to be honest with y'all, I must say, when I set out in 1989, I accomplished far more than I ever thought I could have planned to accomplish for myself. But that's because I wasn't on my plan, I was on God's plan. Amen. And um, when you're on God's plan, it ain't really much nobody can do to stop you. So um, people look at me and say, you know, they, they can talk about who did this and who did that. Um, me, I really don't care what people say. Y'all all know that about me because, I mean, everybody has an opinion. And it's kind of simple. One guy turned professional as a junior middleweight and became heavyweight champ of the world. And I can't think of too many other people that ever did such a feat in my life. So, um, with that being said, great. I think I did enough. Um, I want to thank everybody who had a part of it, everybody who participated, everybody in Pensacola, everybody from all over the world. That there are people that came here from some of everywhere to see me fight my last fight. And I just got to say thank you because without me being God's instrument that he used to play his music through, I wouldn't know any of those people. So um, there are several people here that touched my life, some, my life in a lot of ways, and I just want to thank everybody who ever had anything and any kind of way to do it, touching my life, helping me become who I became. Uh, I love the world. I love living. I love God. I love my family. I love my friends. I love all my fans. I even love the haters. And um, I do. You I mean you gotta love them too, they don't know better. <laughs> but um. One thing I gotta say, and Scott, you're a tough, you're a tough, you're a tough dude. Thank you. you understand me? I knew you wanted to fight me for a reason. I see why now. You're pretty tough. I would have came in that slipping. You might have got lucky, but <laughs> <laughs> but you did come right, and I appreciate that you came. That's a professional was supposed to come. You came and gave it all you had, and not many people do that. People, to me, in today's society, we don't get enough respect for people. We don't give enough respect to people who come out and lay it all on the line. Because I see big fights with guys like like. I mean, I don't want to call them names, but guys fight big fights and they go out and they just lay down. You know, and it's like, I knew he was going to be a tough guy to deal with. When I tore my bicep, I knew I was going to have a problem with him more so then because I couldn't throw the punches I wanted to throw, but 
he may have taken him anyway, who knows? But I'm not the guy that pulls out a pipe. You know, I tell myself that's just me, I gotta go hard with the other hand. So, I mean, I'm a guy who never made excuses, that's why I don't accept excuses. Um, so all my fighters will tell you in the gym, they come tell me they got a hurry hand, I ask what's wrong with the other one. Because I don't deal with excuses well. And the reason I don't deal with excuses well is because I don't make them. So I didn't cry about my bicep being torn and I, I fight. I couldn't spar the last two weeks, but it's what it is, it's what I do for a living. So I have never ducked and dodged nothing. Don't know. I went to fight the stitches in my eye before. I didn't did it all. So I just am glad to say that when I closed my book, which is tonight, they know I played King of the Hill. Whoever came my way, I took it. Even when people told me I shouldn't take it, I still took it. And just like tonight, I went out the same way I came in. Injured and all, if I say I'm going to fight, guess what? I'm going to fight. Yeah, you did that with Mama. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> there you go right there. See what's going on right there? Can you take a picture of me, you and Nate? <laughs> of course I can. Of course I can. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on, child. Come on, Nate, right here. Yeah, but he my daddy. Right here. Oh, no. So as you see, I'm on Terry Griffin. My Terry Griffin was the guy that disqualified me against and gave me my first loss as a professional. And, and the thing about that is it still don't matter. It's like I was able to touch his life because he became like a champion of the world because he came involved with me. So it was a not the best incident, but it's still happening. You don't you know I don't hold nothing against nobody. It wasn't his fault. He didn't make the call. The commissioner made the call. You you my Terry Griffin name always gonna mean something because of him. Thank you, brother. Whenever you say Roy John Jr., my third Griffin gonna mean something. Yep. And, I, and I got mad respect for that. Thanks, I love it. Hey, look. I looked up to him. He don't even remember. In 1991, National Golden Gloves, I got robbed against Jeremy Williams. I talked to him. He said, bro, don't worry about it. Keep going strong. He said, you see what happened to me in 88? Keep going strong. And we did it. We played, he don't even remember. We, I stuck him in the game. No, I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm saying. Oh. I ain't saying I stopped you. I oh, said I we played it. Oh, I thought that you got the game. No, I stopped you. Come on, stop with the ego, oh, chap. No, I'm just saying. Me and that man in the orange shirt back there, we don't play them basketball court. Huh? I thought you were talking basketball. Me and that man in the orange shirt back there, that man ain't being washed. We don't play them basketball court. Oh, yeah, Phil. Oh, yeah. Uh, nah, you good, brother. It's all good. You say he's a But, uh, it's like, um, even with people like this, you know, it's like I'm the kind of person that I don't hold grudges because me, Nate, and Nathan had more fights by me than I had about me. But that's what real friends do. And when you got true friends like that, be a Marshall and be have been friends since eighth grade. You know, it's like I don't really change much. You know, it's just I am who I am. That's why I stay right here in Post Cola because I know who I know. I know where to go to get whatever I need from. I know everything going on. So it's like everybody knows everybody. And that's what a close knit community is supposed to be about. When everybody knows everybody, everybody knows who they can depend on, who they can't depend on, where to go, where not to go. It's just a beautiful thing. So I wish we would get back more to being like we used to be. When life was about fun and basketball, everybody getting along and dancing against one another and having great times instead of people just around killing each other now. So society is taking a change and we do it to ourselves because we start making these laws that cause us to do different things. It's just it's just crazy society. But you know, we're going to do what we can to try to keep it as best we can keep it, try to make the most progress we can. And I just want to say I thank God for allowing me to make so many people be able to come together and enjoy themselves, no matter what color, what race, what gender we are. We all enjoy one another when we had a Roy Jones fight, right? Yes, well, yeah. Yeah. Thank all the press for coming out, and thank Susan who helped us with tonight, doing a lot of good stuff with the checks and everything. So thank you very much, everybody. Thanks for coming out. Appreciate it. <laughs>